Good evening. Welcome back to WNSB News. I'm your host, Sterling Warren. And for tonight's stories, a snap election has arrived, and you, the people, are taken to the streets. We've come to White Rock to hear what you have to say. For our next story, we've traveled all over the province to hear from the words of the candidate party leaders. And for our final story tonight, sports. The EVBL Cup comes to a close. Who's won? And what's next? Find out tonight on the WNSB News, Episode 2. Our top story tonight, a snap election to poll citizens on who they want leading them through this pandemic has been called by Premier John Horgan. This announcement has thrown the province into chaos and unrest. Santiago Henderson covers the streets of White Rock live to see what you the people are thinking and saying. More on this. Wow, our second episode, that's really exciting. Uh, a lot of news people don't tell you this, but news business is rough business as we are sure finding out. But just when you feel you're out of luck, boom, an election happens, and there we go. We're off, we're off running again, hitting the road, finding the news for the people. Uh, today, we are in White Rock, which is really nice, and it has the world's longest pier, and, uh, and also really beautiful. If you need a place to get out here, to get, go out to, this is a really nice place to come visit, just for the day or for the weekend. Uh, we are interviewing the people to find out about the election in BC. Can you ask me some questions? Uh, what kind of questions? Some questions about the election. It's Canadian with issue. WNSB. Yeah. So we're here today with a couple of Langley residents that are spending the day in White Rock. How is the day going so far? I mean, going good. It's sunny. It's nice. Got our ice cream. Spent a lot of money at a thrift store. Now we're enjoying the view. So mm -hmm. it's a good day. Now about the election, uh, have you guys voted? Yes, I have voted. I haven't voted yet. How about you who haven't voted? What are some of the important things for you to, de to decide your vote? Um, I'd say just looking at like what they're going to be putting like back into the community, how they're going to be using, you know, our taxpayers' dollars, um, certain, and then like looking at like wages and stuff for the year, um, things like that. Just look, because you know we're all like, well, for me, I'm like the working woman. And then I just started a business this year, so probably looking into like what they'll be doing for small businesses. What's your business? Uh, <laughs> so See, <girl. laughs> Say it for her. It's called the Bliss Makers. It's a gift box and grazing board company. It's amazing. You should check it out. Yeah. Yeah. So I do that. So we do like niche um, gift boxes, and it's just all about um, celebrating life and living life to the fullest in the moment. Oh, that sounds. That sounds really, really nice. It is. Why? Why should people vote? People should vote because we need to come together and have a better White Rock. Um, well, like it's a cool right that you like here. We're allowed to like have a say in our political standings, like compared to like other places where you're not allowed. So like it's good to like use your right to do that. So then you have control over what's going on, like somewhat control. How come you guys haven't voted yet? Well, don't just, you have to go in? You have to like I register. I just don't know enough about politics. Okay. Well, what would you like to see happen different than how things are today? Um, anything, anything. I don't know. Uh, I, don't I just even know. can't vote conservative right now, so that's good. Y you would. I like. I like um, liberal. Yeah. I'd in liberal. the middle. In the middle. In the middle. What about the NDP? They're not bad either. Yeah, or NDP. They're, yeah, they're good too. But I heard the NDP guy's really young. Did I heard that? Young is bad. Yeah. And young is just I'm not, a little immature. Like, but you look pretty young. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> I know, but I'm not running for premier, is it? No, I don't it's know. It's mayor? Is. I don't know what the election is. Thanks for staying with us. Uh, we are still in White Rock. We decided to walk down the pier, and it really is uh, very long. And we'll be back to our story soon. We just got to finish, finish walking, walking the pier. Uh, it, it was a beautiful day in White Rock. Oh my gosh! Now look. I want to ask you a couple of questions just about the election if you voted. Sure. If you went, thank you so much. Yep. It was uh, kind of greedy and premature and taking advantage of a COVID situation. Yeah. Um, what do you guys want to see different after the election? I think I'd like to see less government interference in our lives. Yeah. Do you find that that has kind of grown did that with the pandemic? Yes. Yes, the, the government is kind of being a nanny state, even more so. Yeah. And, and I'd like to see uh, a little more emphasis on life, and life in the womb, pro-life, and, uh, and freedom of religion, those kinds of things. And freedom of speech. Yeah, freedom of speech. There is a, a terrible uh, breakdown in, in being who we are as people. Too many people are afraid to speak what's really been embedded and etched in their own hearts. Yeah. And we were made that way. You know, we're, we're not, uh, this is not just rocket science and it's not scientific. It's like we were born in our mother's womb. We were created uh, by a loving God, a merciful God. And he gave us this beautiful earth to enjoy for our earthly pilgrimage. And look what we're doing. We're not even respecting the gift in every other person's womb. And when you kill people in the womb, let me tell you, it makes for a very disordered society and only darkness will come from that. And we've seen that in ancient cultures, like the Mayan culture, for example. They sacrificed their children. And guess what happened? And so even in the Roman culture... What happened to the Mayans? The Mayans uh, used to sacrifice their children to the... And then what, and then what happened to them? The, the culture was completely imploded. Well, and it uh, didn't... didn't help that the uh, conquistadors came with disease and yes. guns and metal. And yes, but still nothing good comes out from that, no. you know. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you so much for sharing. Thank you for taking the time. It was really... Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So great to see so many passionate voters. For our next story, the race to candidacy has been hectic this year as parties scramble to urgently collect their campaigns together. Santiago Henderson delivers a whirlwind tour around BC, getting an inside look around what the parties are all about, and especially their candidates. More on this. Today, uh, we are interviewing the campaign for NDP candidate Bryn Smith, a hot young gun coming out of Teachers College, ready to take over the world and trying to unseat a liberal incumbent in a tough race in this district where the liberals have taken over for many years. Oh yeah. Uh, could we ask you some questions? Uh, yeah. Oh, nice. Um, all right, we're here for our second episode. Very exciting, and we are with Mr. Smith. I'm assuming yeah. uh, he is Bryn Smith, the candidate uh, for the NDP. His is dad. Uh, how's it going? Oh, very well, thank you. So, what is it that you guys are hoping to do today with waving the signs? Oh, just raise a little awareness, uh, get people out to vote, I would guess, would be the, the best thing. What are the main things that, in his platform that he's really hoping to get across? Better transit, better seniors care, and keep working on housing, housing affordability for, for this area. Well, that's, that's a tough ask. What is it like being a candidate's dad? Uh, it hasn't been too bad for me. It's more stressful for his mother. Because of the seven, that's the last movie. Uh, where uh, Karen is, and then three on the other side, which is oh, the okay. other way. Sure. Do I do that? Sure. So do I come here? Yeah. Okay. Just what's happening ask here? Couple, Anything else you'd like to say? Uh, no, I just hope everybody gets out and votes this election, uh, especially young people, yeah. and get together with your parents and vote as a block, right? Yeah. Like, like, I'm 60, uh, I've had my chance that uh, everything... Uh, that has been offered in my life and I think it's time for young people's concerns to be more important so this is Bradley Smith 
father of Ren Smith, uh, reporting live from White Rock. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot. All right, so our, our election coverage continues. Now we're over in Coquitlam, where uh, candidate Nicholas Sperling is uh, advocating for change in the community. Coquitlam is a de very different vibe than White Rock, beautiful White Rock, uh, but we are slowly adjusting. Uh, so, more in a minute. Why should someone vote for the Green Party and yourself? Well, the Green Party, I think, is the only forward-thinking party at the moment. Uh, we're the only party that's looking at how we can keep our economy going as we move into uh, all of these changes around automation and around uh, the end of fossil fuels. So we support things like basic income, education, so that we can transition people into new positions, but also just education in general, because we believe in supporting the people of the future. What do you think about besides politics? Uh, what do I think about? Yeah, uh, well, I mean, as far as sports goes, I'm a huge soccer player, I'm a cross-country skier, I'm an artist, I run a construction company, um, I uh, volunteer most of my time with the BC Green Party and also doing LGBTQ2 plus advocacy work. I'm on the board of directors for Vancouver Pride, I founded and I'm the president of Tri-Cities Pride. One of the things I love to do is renovate, uh, so that's part of why I have my construction company, um, but that's just something that I like to do on my own place as well. What is do you still think J.K. Rowling is a danger to children? I do. Transphobia is dangerous to children, and J.K. Rowling's transphobia is dangerous to children, yes. What transphobic Wait, thing sorry. has J.K. Rowling ever said? If you go through her Twitter, you'll find a, a plethora of uh, things that she said in her essays. I've done breakdowns on Twitter. I know multiple people have written articles about it. There's actually a really good Forbes article that highlights exactly all of the transphobic things that she said, and at the end of it, there's a Twitter a thread. It's, I believe it has over a hundred tweets and it talks about all of the different transphobic things that J.K. Rowling has, uh, has said. Are you a big Harry Potter fan? So see, I've read everything J.K. Rowling has ever said and she's never said anything transphobic of the sort. In fact, you were forced to take down a tweet and give a half-assed apology. Are you taking back that apology right now by stating that she's still a danger to children? I never made an apology because I stand by what I said. I see. Are you representing J.K. Rowling? No, I'm representing myself. Why? What is a big stake for you here? That's a big conversation. You want to have a conversation in a minute? No, I, I want to know why you felt like this was the right time for you to come and ask these questions in the middle of my interview. Well, public street. I think I have that. Yeah, but we were interviewing her. Why? Why do you? Why do you get to interrupt my? Interview? I just felt like it. Okay, so that's not really nice. Do you mind giving us a sec? Sure, I'll give you a sec. Okay, thanks so much. Yeah. Um, Anyways, back to what we were saying. Yeah. You said you like renovations. Um, I guess, but I wanted to know, is there a, renov a renovation project that you're particularly proud about? Um, I mean, I, I believe in doing the absolute best work that I can on every project that I'm involved in. So I wouldn't say that there's a specific one that I'm uh, most proud of. However, I renovated, uh, I did a full renovation all by myself of my place out in Chilliwack. And so I am very proud of that. That was a, a sort of a momentous occasion in my life. And I recorded that through YouTube because I make, uh, generally I make trans-related educational content through my YouTube channel. But I was focused on this renovation. And so I, I focused my channel on, on recording that. And um, yeah, I, I'm very proud of having completed an entire renovation on, on an apartment all by myself. Well, that's awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your time. Yes, thank you. And thank you and, and good luck. Thank you very much. Thank you. Do you like renovations? <laughs> renovations are great. Yeah. Well, do, what, what do you like to do with your free time besides this? Thank you for everything you're doing. I have to... I'm a little busy right now. Oh, what are you busy with? I'm editing some video I just took. Are you uploading it to, tw to, to Twitter? Oh, yeah, it will be. Well, um, well, there you have it, folks. That was a really nice conversation with Nicola.
He's not here, uh, but he'll give us a call.